Hello guys, welcome to a pickups video. Now you may remember me saying I was going to slow down a little bit on the old pickups in the last video. Before you start EDT 1138, I have at least changed my buying habits. This is all stuff that's pretty damn good bargains, alright? So I haven't been splashing the cash in quite obscene ways as I've been recently. So there's a fair amount of stuff here, but they're all good deals. So don't start, Ed, alright? I know I said I was going to slow down, but I'm getting there, right? Yeah, and Minks, uh, not going to be too many extravagant uh, purchases here to make you feel better about your uh, expensive pickups. But anyway, let's get cracking on. First, I got a bunch of Xbox games, original Xbox games, for free off of uh, Inferno V2, another YouTuber here. I'll put a link in the low bar. And uh, he just messaged me saying, I've got a bunch of Xbox games. You can have them for now if you want them, just pay the postage. So yeah, I paid £5 postage and got 10 Xbox games for now. Um, one or two of them I've got already I think but these are all in brilliant condition and yeah most of them I haven't even played and all of them I'll certainly enjoy uh, you know playing. Okay first of all Max Payne first one uh, best version of that game is, is the Xbox original I think so all, all these games are complete and in excellent condition so it's really nice to get that message off Inferno V2 a bunch of free Xbox games you're not going to say no are you? Turok Evolution Splinter Cell Chaos Theory which I think this is the one I've already got of the Splinter Cell games but I love Splinter Cell games so I've got two copies of that now one for trade available uh, Men of Valor never played that, never read anything about it but it looks gorgeous uh, it's one of them games that really reminds me that the original Xbox is a lot more powerful than I remember it being, you know, it's just yeah, it pisses on the PS2 in terms of graphics, and um, that looks really cool. Men of Fella, Rainbow Six Three. I've never actually played a Rainbow Six Three, a uh, Rainbow Six game, or whatever. Uh, squad based shooters are not something that I've uh, really spent much time with, so that'll be interesting to have a go on. 007, um, everything or nothing. Project Gotham Racing Two. Amped, the first one. This I used to love this back in the day. I used to love putting on my own music tracks, uh, really chilled out music, and playing that just zooming down the slopes. Really cool game. Again, all all these are brilliant condition, complete for free. Splinter Cell Pandora tomorrow, and the original Splinter Cell. I absolutely adore Splinter Cell games, and I'm sure I'm going to enjoy playing through these again. Right. So thanks Inferno V2 for that. Absolutely brilliant. Cheers. Right. Couple of N64 games. Um, now, some of these, a couple of these pickups are things that I got a while ago. I just I forgot to put in pickups videos. So, um, but yeah, I got Excite Byte 64, which has the uh, inlay, the book, and the game fully complete. So, Excite Byte 64, and it's just it's it's one of the very few uh, N64 games that I still need to add to collection that I was after. There really isn't that many. I've got 31 games, I think, now, and I think there's only two or three left that I want, um, unless there's any secret hidden gems out there that people can recommend to me that aren't too well known. Um, yeah, there's only, I think, uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day and the Kirby game, which are both pretty expensive. So they're the only two games left, really, for my N64 collection. But excited about the 64, and I got that for the princely sum of £4 total, including pa postage and packing. So that was an absolute bargain. The other N64 game I've got, and I was surprised to get this pretty cheap, and it is Chameleon Twist. Now, I got that for £2.70. <laughs> um, now, it doesn't have a manual. It's just got the inlay and the, uh, and the cartridge there. So it's not complete, but this game really doesn't come up often at all on, on eBay. It, you, you could consider it a rare, or certainly an uncommon N64 game. Um, you know, I'm not as uh, well read on the uh, rarity of N64 as I am on Mega Drive, but you really don't see this coming up too often. So to get it for £2.70, <laughs> I was pretty damn happy about that. The second game is probably more sought after, it looks like a better game. Um, but they both look like fun little platformers uh, with some unique ideas to them. So yeah, to get it for £2.70, brilliant. With 150 postage. So I guess, you know, quoting full prices here, I guess... Uh, yeah, that's £4.20, but still, you know, 
420, good price for that game. This is a game that I picked up a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure if I already put this in a pickups video. I don't think I did. And it is Vectorman 2. Now I did a uh, let's play of uh, Vectorman 1 a little while back and I was really pleased with it, having never played it before back in the day. Um, and as soon as I played it, I thought, this is really fun. Uh, so I had to go out and get the uh, sequel. This is complete, the manual's behind the cartridge under the uh, box there. So it's complete. Vectorman 2. Now, this is really rare on UK eBay. I got this from America, it was sent from America. And um, what did it cost me? It cost me 15 quid. Um, yeah, I think about 20 quid in total with the postage, um, which is pretty good. It really is decent, that is, uh, for that game. Not in the most amazing qualities I thought it was. It was advertised as like new because it was apparently sealed. But the seal was this really loose cling film around it. I don't think that was the original seal. And also the side is a little bit mangled. Well, a little bit bent on there. And of course with these cardboard boxes, you know, they're more easily damaged. But it was sent in a really secure box. So there's no way that that happened in the post. There was no, you know, the box was, it was in a cardboard box and then bubble wrap and everything. And that wasn't damaged. There was no way, way that that happened in the post. So yeah, but I didn't bother sending it back because it would have cost me to send it back, and it would have been. I just, I just can't be asked with it. That's fine. I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Vectorman too. All right, last Mega Drive game, and this is uh, going towards my mission of getting the full English language RPG set for Mega Drive and Mega CD. Um, I'm not doing a complete PAL set, but I will do a complete RPG set. And this is an American one, and it's Uncharted Waters. Now, it looks pretty shocking on the back, on the pictures. I've not actually had this on yet. I mean, it looks very basic. It almost looks like a Master System game. Um, but it's an RPG, and I do like me RPGs. And it's an American exclusive. It's in really great condition. This one came with a bit of a story. Or a, yeah. This one... This one was a bit painful. This was a good price. It was the cheapest one on eBay at the time. Um, I've never seen this go on an auction. They're always buying now. It's with it being an American exclusive, it's just not as easy to get here. But the one that I got it was the cheapest uh, example of this on the site. And comparing its completed listings, it was still pretty decent. It was about 25 quid. Yeah. And that was including postage. But it was from the notorious. Uh, bin man on eBay, uh, he who shall not be named with numbers after his after his first name. And I'm sure you all know who I mean. And uh, it was kind of convoluted what happened with this because I'd put on uh, some duplicates to, to sell. Um, and one of the duplicates I put on there was uh, Pro Projector. Pro Protector. Pro Projector? Yeah. Now it's a fairly sought after Mega Drive game. The one I put on was in really good nick. I had two copies. I decided to keep the one that was a little bit rougher and sell the decent quality, quality one just to make a bit more money. Um, you know, to try and fund some of the collecting. And um, I put whenever I put stuff on eBay, it's always on uh, you know 99p starts with two pound postage and packing. I always put them, you know, yeah, no reserve, auction, no buy it nows. It's just how I like to do things. I mean, it is possible to do fair buy it nows. I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, some people prefer that. It's just less hassle. I've certainly got some really fair buy it now deals in the past, not least off Snezztastic, who had an amazing deal on a buy it now for the PlayStation package. But there are certain sellers that take the piss with buy it nows, and this guy is one of them. And uh, so I was quite surprised to find that he had the cheapest. He had the cheapest copy of this on, the, on on eBay. But yeah, he had bid for and won my copy of Pro Projector. Pro Protector or something. And he won it for like 30 quid. Um, and I, it just stuck in my craw a little bit to sell to him because uh, he's a reseller, blatantly. And yeah, I just know he's going to put it back on and mark it up and, to make some money. And it's just, it goes against the reason that I put my um, games on a low auction, no reserve, you know, fair postage. I put them on all these different things to make it so that collectors 
can go for games, whether they're rare or not, and get them for their real market value, dictated by the buyers, you know? Not dictated by some money-grabbing bastard who's marking them up ridiculously because, you know, he's managed to scoop some rare games, but um, he won my Pro Protector, and I really didn't want to sell it to him. I actually messaged him, I said, look, you know, the reason I put this on here in this way is so that people can avoid having to, you know, go to the, the, the bin men. And uh, a bit of a back and forth and that, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to go back on a on a on a sale. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I did have to end up sending him the the probe ejector. And he kind of kind of had me over a barrel as well because I wanted this, and it was weirdly the cheapest version on eBay. And if you know who I'm talking about, he doesn't usually have the cheapest versions copies of games on eBay at all. It's usually the the high end of the scale. I just hate that shit. But anyway, so that really stuck in my craw for a bit. <laughs> um, but I got on chat and it was a good price for that game. So, being as I've got a PS2 now, um, as I mentioned off Snestastic a little while a while back, um, I never thought I'd do this, but I've actually been buying some PS1 games because of course it's backwards compatible. And this is a system I never thought I would uh, be collecting for. But there's a few exclusives on there that it just you can't ignore, you know. Um, the first I got is uh, Tenchu Stealth Assassin. Uh, it sounds like it's got some really uh, individual gameplay elements to it. And that was uh, £2.10. So yeah, I mean, again, the rest of the games I'm going to show you now are all really good bargains. Good prices, in my opinion. So Tenchu Stealth Assassin, £2.10 with 150 postage. So 360 in total. And it's supposed to be just like a really, you know, quite individual uh, game. And it is complete. Uh, it's in good nick. Tenchu Stealth Assassin. I got the next game after a conversation with a fellow YouTuber. I think it was Custom Grinds, but I can't be 100% sure about that. Um, I was having a conversation with someone about um, that it should have been a flashback sequel, because I really loved that game. And um, this guy, like I said, I think it was Custom Grinds, not sure, said there was a flashback sequel, and it was Fade to Black on PlayStation 1. Um, I'd never heard of it, um, so I just went out straight away and got it. And it was this is one ninety five, including postage and packing. So that was a proper bargain. Um, now it is a polygon game, which I was a little bit surprised by. Um, I was expecting something exactly like Flashback. I don't know why. <laughs> Not very, uh, you know. All, all games went three D in PlayStation One here, didn't they? Whether they should have done or not, but yeah, two pound for Fade to Black Flashback sequel. Definitely worth checking out, so happy to have that. Now, last PlayStation 1 game in this pickups video, and I've got a bit of a confession to make. Now, most of you been watching for a while, you'll know that I'm a big RPG fan, um, but I've never played a Final Fantasy game, ever. And they're supposed to be the, one of the best uh, seminal RPG series. So, uh, yeah, just never played them. Just never got around to it. They've always been on platforms that I didn't own, or just whatever. But that's going to change with the purchase of Final Fantasy VIII. It's supposed to be one of the best. I think uh, there's arguments raging of whether seven or eight is the best, but certainly supposed to be up there. And uh, this one it doesn't have the manual. All four discs in good condition. But it didn't have the manual. Uh, this was... How much was this? I've got a list in front of me. Oh yeah, £5.60. But 250 plus inch packing, so about eight quid basically. About eight quid for that, which is a decent price without the manual. I'll try and pick that up down the line at some point. But yeah, I'm finally going to play a Final Fantasy game, see what I think of them. Now, then, yeah, I've been into the handhelds in a big way recently, been uh, collecting for the DS, my new system. Um, but before that, I got a couple of advanced games. Um, this one I got off 2E UK uh, for five pounds delivered, and it is Mario Kart Super Circuit. And it's funny because I sent them a message saying uh, I sent you the, the box for that for your spare cart of it a while back and now I can buy the, the full game back off you, which is ironic. But it wasn't 2 eat, it was um, Shock 16, I think, uh, who I'd done a trade with and sent some stuff out to. Yeah, Shock 16. But so it wasn't 2 eat. But yeah, £5 for Mario Kart Super Circuit off 2 UK. And fucking happy with that one. That's a brilliant Mario Kart game. Really enjoy that one. Um, so yeah. 
Next is another example of an all-time classic getting a reboot on the Game Boy Advance and it is Final Fight 1. Love Final Fight, definitely my second favourite beat up after Streets of Rage. Final Fight, absolutely amazing. This is a kind of, um, it has got some updates, you can play as uh, uh, Alpha Cody and Alpha, um, the other guy, this one. There's two different versions of these two characters that you can play as. And uh, I think there's some new levels in it as well, but just brilliant to have Final Fight on a, on a, on a handheld. So I'll definitely enjoy playing through that again. So that was a good deal too. That was um, two quid. Plus 150 precision packing, so 350 in total. Dead happy to have that one. Right, now on to a little bit of a ds Um So yeah, first of all, locally I picked up some games um, from Playtime in Nottingham in the Broadmarsh Centre. And I got a Band Hero attachment with two Guitar Hero games. There's this one here, which is Guitar Hero on Tour. There's another one that I've got lying around somewhere, but two games basically and the attachment for a fiver. Can't go wrong. And this is a fun little thing. It only works as far up as the, uh, on the lights. You can't use this on the uh, XL or the uh, I, DSI, because it has to have the advanced cartridge slot there and you put the attachment into the advanced cartridge slot like that and the game's actually um, horizontal uh, uh, sorry vertical, you, you view the game like that and uh, like that, so it's pretty sweet right, also from Playtime, uh, Nottingham for DS I got Metroid Hunters which I got for 4 quid I think, yeah which um, Metroid games I've never played actually, it's supposed to be really cool so I'm happy to have a go and see what that's all about but this is one of them games where I'm not sure if it's actually suited to the DS because the way you move around, you kind of use the stylus to point at where you, you know, to, to view and then it, it's just a bit fiddly. I've not got used to it yet, but um, we'll see how we get on with it. So that's all complete. And I love these DS cases as well. So much better than the, uh, the Game Boy Advance with the cardboard. Really nice proper cases. So you can build up a cool collection of, uh, of games. Looks nice to have a collection going. Next one for DS, CSI, Dark Motive. Love the CSI games on 360. Um, yeah, different type of experience. I just love them, so I'm sure this will work well on DS with the hunting for clues and stuff. And that was two quid with a quid postage, so three quid total. Three quid for that, can't go wrong. I've been quite patient with the DS collecting um, because if you are patient, you can get most of them pre pretty good deals. They do, it's quite, it varies quite a lot in how much they go for, but if you're patient, you can pick these games up for fairly cheap prices. So, with that in mind, I got New Super Mario Bros, which is an absolute gem so far, loving that game. And uh, that was 816, which is the most expensive, I think, yeah, um, game that I've got for this system so far. You can't really get that much cheaper. I haven't seen it go for much cheaper. Um, so I got that for eight, eight quid fifty, basically. New Super Mario Bros, really cool game. And it's got a lot of um, fun like mini games on it as well, which is awesome. Um, obviously the DS with the touch screen, it's uh, suited to all these different types of things, uh, mini games, uh, but yeah, uses good use of that. So that's pretty fun. Uh, an RPG here, Lunar Nights. Yeah, uh, don't know much about it. Went on it purely on the title, thinking it might be this, similar to the Lunar games on uh, Mega CD. Probably nothing to do with them, but uh, still looks like a cool little RPG. And I have had it on, it looks fun. That one was, oh, let's get that one, 6.55. So, yeah. Beaver Pinata, Pocket Paradise. Um, again, like the games on 360, so this would be fun. That was two quid. With a quid postage, so three quid total. Rhythm Paradise, which I've read good reviews about, got that for 99p plus 170 postage, so yeah, about, about 270. Um, yeah, heard good things about that. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, which is one of the only kind of adult themed DS games that I've come across so far. Obviously, it's quite um, you know, child friendly, family friendly, but that's got an 18 rating. But yeah, Grand Theft Auto game. It is overhead isometric, um, but looks fun so far. Giant Sound Wars. Got that one for £3.22 plus a quid postage, so four twenty-two. Oh. Next one was uh, Dragon Quest Nine. Absolutely love Dragon Quest Eight on PlayStation 2. Um, 
so this is a no-brainer and this looks really fun so far it's 370 plus two quid postage and packing so 570 the kind of general rule that I had for picking up DS games on eBay was uh, as long as I can get them for at least three quid less than what I've seen them for in the shops the lowest price in the shops then I'll go for it otherwise I just pick them up locally and give the shops some business most of these I got them for more than three quid less than I've seen them so that was my rule Dragon Quest and then another essential DS purchase is Phantom Hourglass which to be honest to start with I was a bit annoyed with I thought this is one of them games that's just forcing the DS you know touch screen controls in there for the sake of it I mean you move Link around by pointing in the general direction of where you want him to walk you don't even use the d-pad to make him move around it just seems forced but after a while I get used to it and I'm having a lot of fun with it so yeah Zelda Phantom Hourglass and obviously representing for the Zelda Massive gotta get Phantom Hourglass and that was uh, 579 plus a quid 50 postage so yeah yeah just about seven quid ish six just over seven quid so it's Zelda and Phantom Hourglass so that's the pickups yeah a healthy little uh, haul of um, DS games some free stuff from uh, Inferno V2 for Xbox I'm just trying to <laughs> yeah and uh, that's it so yeah alright guys speak to you guys later bye